Good morning. It's Wednesday, day three of Booktubeathon. Let's get started. great morning. I think in about 90 minutes I read 100 pages of this. It's a very light, kind of breezy read. I'm really enjoying it. It's very problematic. It's funny. It's very well written. It's entertaining. It's very problematic. <laughs> this middle-aged gay guy, he's obviously gay, uh, has his has a protege, his charwoman, his former charwoman's son, who's now married with kids and a dog, and gets caught breaking and entering, and is up for trial. Now, I don't know if there was a sexual relationship between the older man and the younger working class man, or not, but certainly the old guy, the narrator, what's his name? Frank. Frank and Johnny. Frank lusts after Johnny. <laughs> and spends money on him, and they used to go on trips together, and now the new wife, Frank hates the new wife, is her name uh, Meg, Megan, uh, and Megan hates him, and all this jealousy, and so Johnny's arrested and standing trial, and Frank had kind of stopped going around to see Johnny because the wife didn't like him, and boy, he sure talks about the wife in a bad way. But he's still friends with the mother, Millie, who used to be his charwoman. Anyway, there's a dog. Johnny's going to prison. Would Frank please look after the dog? Frank refuses. Then he, after Johnny goes to prison, he starts visiting Johnny's mother, Millie, and her husband, who is actually Johnny's father, it turns out. And they're not taking care of the dog very well at all. They're not walking him. So I'm just at the point where he's thinking about actually taking him on and taking care of him. Now, Ackerley has written about dogs. My Dog Tulip, I believe, is a memoir. And I think in that memoir, he actually talks about bestiality as much more uh, of a valid option for him in his romantic life than ever finding true love with a man. <laughs> So I don't know where this is going with this, but the transference of his love and lust for Johnny to the dog, Evie, or Evie, 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 um, yeah, and the, the, the derisive comments he makes about working class people uh, are horrible, but I'm not going to get my shirt in and out about that kind of stuff, at least not yet. I'm just enjoying it for a really good story. And time to take my hat off and go to work. Well, I'm having an amazing reading day. I'm about a third of the way, I'm not sure, but I'm on page 70, I think, of this novel. I absolutely love it. And it's just such a wonderful feeling after a rather negative experience yesterday with the Donald Ryan to fall so deeply into a novel and have every note and every move and every aspect of the reading experience resonate with something in me that responds to well-wrought fiction. As Eric warned me in a comment the other day, this is a really dark story, but I have never read a novel out of India or about India that wasn't an absolute wrenching reading experience, and this is going to be one too. I'll say more a little later. But I am absolutely loving this one. I got some book mail today. This one is Blame It on Steve Donahue. I've been hearing about it since it was first published in Canada a couple of years ago, but it was 
either not available to me on Amazon Japan or so expensive in the hardcover or whatever, I never got around to buying it or reading it. And it's now, I got this one from Amazon Japan for $13 hardcover. Looking forward to reading it. This one I blame it on Britta Bowler because she's read it the other day and I was really tempted by it because of the cover and apparently it's been in the news for other reasons <laughs> recently Britta read it as soon as I saw she was reading it I ordered it I now have Amazon Prime so shipping is free so it's way too tempting just to buy whatever I want and get it the same day or the next day with free shipping but by the time it arrived Britta had finished reading it and didn't like it very much, so Britta and I, what would you say, Britta? 50-50? We agree on about 50% of the books we read, or would it be a little higher? So there's still a good chance that I will like it. Brother is short enough that I could fit it in this week, but I, I think I've got other stuff that I'll try, but it would be a backup if I have any more bales. This, this one I might take home to Canada. And now, I've got about maybe an hour more reading before I have to teach my evening classes. So it is time to get back to We Think the World of You by J.R. Ackerley. Hey, well, I just finished this what the hell? <laughs> I need to think about this before I try to talk about it. It was really good, but I have no idea what I just read, which is a horrible reading reader's cliche, but uh, I'm going to have to think about it, and I'm not sure this hat is a thinking cap, so I'll get back to you maybe after work. <laughs> what the hell? I have never seen anything like this in my life. There's a huge stuffed dog sprawled over two bicycles. Outside of a outside of a flower shop, but what's the story here? It's fabulous. <laughs> My god. That's good. I can't eat sushi on my diet. This is eel. Unagi. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good, I can eat that, but I'm going for meat. How can I do this with one hand? What is that? A rib or something? Some of it. I forget what they put those eggs in to make them that color. Oh. 
I love this little Shoten guy near where I teach on Wednesday night. I th oh, they don't have the lights on tonight. Maybe it's still too bright. These uh, leaves and benches are all lit up the thing. But uh, Shoten guy is like a shopping street, but really it's usually a collection of small, interesting restaurants, bars, cafes. And uh, this one is very cool. Oh, look at that. I want to study there. <laughs> no charge. That means there's no cover charge. Most Japanese restaurants, izakaya, they have a cover charge. It's usually cheap, three or four dollars. And for that you get a very tiny appetizer. But sometimes it's much higher than that, very rarely. I once sat down in a really run-down bar in my old home. That looks like a cute waiter. Um, my parents were visiting Japan and my boyfriend at the time and there was about six or eight of us and we sat down and it was not a special place. It was old. The sofa we were sitting in with world beer and wine. My goodness. That place looks nice. We're having a date. These, there's a, I haven't walked up here for a long time. There's a Spanish restaurant. I've only gone drinking along the street once, maybe twice, but not for a few years. Here's a standing wine bar. Four hundred dollars. Jesus! I have time for a quick glass of wine before work. What do you think my students would say? And they, it's not only standing. They have a, they have a stools. I'm definitely coming back there soon. I have no idea what they are, but they're pickled, something. A candy shop. Oh, I think it's Vietnamese. Maybe. Can I have a side order of thighs with that? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get arrested. <laughs> and there's more. I don't know if I have time, but I'll, I'm gonna go a little quick. Oh, maybe that's an Indian restaurant. Because I really do have to oh, cat chop. Maybe I'll, there's more that way, but maybe I don't have time. So I'll just go down this little narrow street because who knows, these, the narrower the street, the more magical the places seem to be. See, I can't read anything, so I don't know what kind of place that is, but I'll just hold it up. What do you see? It's like a little izakaya wine bar. Oh my God. I don't live very far from here. I could come here every night to drink. See, these are little secret magical hidden spots. I think I might have drawn drinking there once. I think so. Years ago. Isn't this fat? This is what I love about Tokyo. I, I, no, no place in Keno City in Canada has these little marvelous black streets where you just find this thing. Oh, that looks really nice. This is my favorite Japanese beer, Heartland beer. God, this is just incredible. And there's more down there and I don't have time to go. So I think now I'm gonna be back around to where I was. But you get the idea. There is what I showed you times maybe two, two, two times more restaurants just back in this area. And then on the other side of Nakano Station, on the other side of Nakano Station, there is an area like this that, oh golly, did I just say golly on YouTube? <laughs> Are they gonna take away my 
membership. Uh, five or ten times as many backstreet shops like this. It's just incredible. I'll make a vlog of that area someday too. That might be an hour long vlog. Alright, off to work I go. Hope I won't be late. And I'm gonna walk and eat my yakitori that you saw me buy. And that's considered rude in Japan, but I'm a foreigner. I can do whatever I want. Hey, well I'm just about to start editing and I see that Raw footage is 20 minutes, so that'll probably get edited down to about 15. And so I'm going to do a quick little wrap-up update at the tail end here. Hey, so just a handheld uh, wrap-up for the end of the day. It's so hot, I'm so tired, but I had maybe the best, uh, best reading day so far. I didn't want to show you those boxes. <laughs> okay. I had maybe the best reading day so far in this uh, book Tubathon. And the more I thought about We Think the World of You by J.R. Ackerley. Where is it? it? It was a five star read for me. It was a really bizarre and compelling little novella, not novel, 160 pages. And what a romp about obsessive love and being careful what you wish for. And rivalry and snobbery and judgment and dogs and sexuality and lust in the most in the strangest little tale I really recommend it but there is a dog that's mildly abused in that the, the owner doesn't take him out and does hit him too often but it's not scary abuse but it's abuse enough abuse that the protagonist in this novel wanted to get that dog out of that house and also there's a little bit of a bestiality scene, not no intercourse, but some definite heavy petting. <laughs> and I don't mean petting the way I use one would usually use that word when talking about dogs. Uh, and I still really recommend it. It was fascinating. Much less controversially, this is a gem of a novel. This, I expect, is going to be the highlight of my book Tubathon, and certainly one of my top reads of what are we? We're in, into August now. This is going to be a book that Eric and I agree on. I mean, I'm still only 40% of the way in or something. So there's time for it to go south. I don't think it's going to go south. I am just delighted by it. And it is a really heavy story. And there's so much interesting stuff. And I love Indian fiction. It's always gut-wrenchingly heartbreaking. But I think it's my favorite if I had to pick a favorite non-Western literature, it would be Indian literature. I freaking love it. I haven't read a bad book out of India. There must be some. I certainly have read some you know, by Western writers of Indian descent that I didn't like so much. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I learned about, what is it called? A sweet from South Asia, Gulab Jamun. And I'll put a picture up. There's the Wikipedia page. It actually plays a fairly pivotal role in how... I'm not good with remembering characters' names, especially when they're... Uh, Madhu is the uh, Hijra, or intersexed character, protagonist. And her Guru Mai, if I'm pronouncing that right, which is like kind of like the den mother of the Hijra household, it actually has an exalted spiritual... Uh, function as well, but it's kind of like a much, uh, uh, somewhat more benign version of the brothel's madam. And uh, they meet because of this sweet gulab jamun, and I think I might even be able to find it in Tokyo, because it's popular in India, Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Mauritius, Fiji, Africa. Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, Suriname, Jamaica. Surely it's made its way to Tokyo in some ethnic restaurant. If anybody out there knows how I can find it, I'm very curious to try it. It's a milk solid based sweet. And I think I need to have it in my life. That's all I got. Um, tomorrow my plan is to finish this sucker. I have uh, quite a bit of reading time built into my day. And if I can, I'm going to finish it. If I happen to finish it uh, in plenty of time, then I might go back to the 
E.F. Benson biography, even though it's not on my TBR for the Booktubeathon, but I think I will easily be able to finish the two remain audiobook, Lord of the Flies, still loving it, listened to a big chunk of that today. I think I will easily be able to finish the two remaining books that I would need to get my seven books, and in fact I'm considering swapping one of them out for the R. O. Kwan novel, The Incendiaries. It just popped up on my script today. It's publication day in audiobook. It's only five hours on audio. So I could easily finish Lord of the Flies tomorrow or the next day and do that. But the other two books that I'm considering, I don't have them here, but one of them is the Italian novel by Starnoni. I really would love to read that. And the other one is... I can't remember. But I might swap one of those out for audio, but we will see. That's all. See you tomorrow. Bye.